Hello everyone, this is Dana. Welcome back to my channel. And today, what we're going to do is um, we're going to make a mini album today. And so I'm in the middle of doing this kind of, I would call it an unofficial series. Um, but through December, all I really wanted to do was put up videos that I thought for me would be good gifts. There are things that I've given as gifts. Um, so, um, things that I've made to give to people, whether it be Christmas or birthdays or anything like that. And, um, so mini albums for me are one of my most favorite things to give. And, um, uh, because I've said it before in many of my other videos, when you can gift somebody their memories in a format that's pretty, that they can flip through. Um, they don't have to go to their digital devices. Um, I, I don't think I've ever given one of those that the person has not absolutely loved it. So I've designed a mini album today that we're gonna be able to utilize six by six paper pads for. I have a lot of these. I tend to not reach for these when I am going to do a project. I'll usually go to my 12 by 12 collections or paper pads. Um, but I have a lot of these and, and they're really pretty. And so if you don't have six by six paper pads, all you do is go to your 12 by 12 and you take a 12 by 12 piece and cut it in to fourths. Cut it at six inches one way, turn those pieces and cut them at six inches again and then you'll have six by six pieces. So um, this is the one that I'm going to be using to decorate my my album with. This is just by my mind's eye. It's called Splendor. Um, and it's number one pretty. But number two, I haven't used any of the papers in it yet. So it's complete and full. Um, I'm going to do two different videos for this project. We're going to assemble um, the mini album. And then in the second video, I'll use the designer paper to um, cut my mats and decorate my pieces. So what I'm using, this is just craft, eight and a half by 11 craft um, paper that I get at Michael's and in the pack, a lot of times they'll have them three for $10. Sometimes they'll have them even five for $10. So this is just the craft color. You can use black as your base. You can use pink as your base, whatever color you wanna use, but I wanted to use craft today. The basics for um, the mini album is our covers are gonna be six by six and our spine is gonna be two by six, okay? These are cereal boxes. Basically what I've done is I've cut, um, actually I think this is the back of a, of a six by six uh, paper pad actually. And I've taken two layers and I've glued them together, okay? So this is two layers thick of cereal box and lightweight chipboard and um, I glued them together after cutting them down. Okay, so you'll need those two six by sixes and a two by six of either lightweight chipboard or cereal boxes glued into two layers. And I'm starting out with two pieces of eight and a half by 11 that I am going to glue together right on the edge here right on the edge of one piece. That was too much glue, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna put these two pieces together. Make sure they're even. Make sure there's no glue, get the glue that's seeping out. Okay, okay. Now, where our seam is in the middle, and I'm running out of art glitter glue, so I'm gonna move to some tacky glue because I'm just gluing everything down here. And what I wanna do is I wanna glue my spine. We want that uh, seam 
to go down the middle of our spine, okay? Because we, we don't want, you're not gonna be able to see it much when we layer it with paper, but you will see some of it, and I don't want that on my front cover. So I'm gonna put it on the spine. I'm using tacky glue and just a foam brush. And whoop, let's get this coming out here. There we go. So I'm just gonna put some tacky glue on here and I'm gonna use my brush to kind of get it evenly coated. And I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna use my ruler to help me. Okay, I'm not really measuring. I just will kind of want the same at the top and bottom, but I want to make sure that it's straight. So I'm going to line up my grid ruler to the edge of my paper, and then I'm going to press my spine up against it. Just like that. So now I know my spine is laying straight on my paper. Okay, we've got that down and I'm not putting my grid ruler away just yet. I'm gonna put some glue on my back cover and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just spreading my glue out evenly so that it coats my entire piece. Now when I lay these next to the, when I lay my covers next to the spine, I want to put them about an eighth of an inch apart. Okay, I've got co that coated. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my grid ruler to the bottom of my spine and I'm going to move it over. And I've got my eighth inch mark right here. I'm going to lay my other cover down on that eighth inch mark and I'm pressing my cover up against the ruler. Okay? Because I know my spine is laying straight and if I'm pressing up against my ruler then my cover is going to lie straight as well. And I've got an eighth of an inch gap between my cover and my spine. So I've got my measurement correct and everything's lying straight because I'm using my ruler to help me. Okay, so now we're gonna do our other piece. And I think because of the hole here, I want that to go on the inside. So I'm gonna put the glue on this side. Okay. I'm just going to spread my glue out evenly, making sure I get edge to edge coverage here. I want to make sure that our glue gets everywhere. We don't want anything bubbling up. Okay, now I'm going to move my ruler over. Again, my spine is sitting there and I'm going to pick an eighth of an inch marker on it a marker where I can measure an eighth of an inch. I'm going to take my cover and I'm going to lay it down at that eighth inch mark and I'm going to press it against my ruler so that I know it's lying straight. So use your grid rulers to help you. If you don't have a grid ruler, just use a regular ruler, straight edge, something like that, something that has a straight edge. I'm just going to press everything down here. Just make sure that it's making contact everywhere. Okay. So if you do not have a grid ruler, okay, make sure I've got some lifting over here. So I'm just going to add some glue. Make sure that's pressed down really good. A little bit of lifting. That's okay. We can always fix that. Just go back and put some glue on it. 
Let me get a paper towel really quick. So if you don't have a grid ruler, use a regular ruler. Use a straight edge. Use a ruler to mark your eighth inch or whatever. Make your marks for your measurements and then um, and then just uh, use a straight edge to line everything up. So now we know everything's all straight. What I'm going to do is take care of some of this overhang here. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm just going to cut these two ends off. And I'm not going to get rid of these because these would make good photo mats for our album. So don't get rid of those pieces. Keep and use everything. Okay, so I'm going to put these away into my scrap pile over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to miter the corners. So I'm just cutting off my corners at an angle but I am not getting too close to that corner okay if you get too close then your cover will show through and you don't want that okay we want to be able to fold everything and cover that chipboard completely I've got some lifting over here so I'm just gonna put some more glue in this corner over here I must have missed that Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take our bone folder and we're going to be working with the long sides first. Okay, I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to run it down the edge of my chipboard. Basically, I want to start training my paper to fold where I want it to go. So I'm just running my bone folder down all the sides. So that it gives an ease to the folding of my paper once I've got glue on it and I go to glue it down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and I'm going to fold these down and I'm even going to go so far as creasing them because it'll just make it that much easier once I've got glue on them. Okay. Just folding those down, creasing them down with my bowling folder. And I'll unfold them and I'll do my short sides. All right, now we're ready for glue. So all I'm gonna do here is take my glue. And make sure y'all can see me here. I'm just gonna take my glue and I'm going to put some glue right on this flap and I'm just going to spread it out with my brush making sure that I get it all the way to the edge okay now I'm just going to take my bone folder and I'm just pressing up against my chipboard and now I'm going to lay those pieces down and see how easy that goes down now that we've we've already like pre-folded it and then I'm just going to burnish it with my bone folder all right now let's do the other long side Lay some glue down. And I'm just holding this up off my table so that when I'm spreading out with my brush, I'm not getting glue all over my surface. Okay, I've got glue everywhere. Now I'm just gonna lay this down. Press down with my hand I'm going to run my bone folder along the side so that I've got good contact and then I'm just going to burnish down. Okay. All right, so that's what we have right now. Now this is bowing. You can see that it's bowing a little bit. As this dries, it will straighten out. 
Okay, now what I'm gonna do with my corners, let me move up so you can see. I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna pinch these corners in, just like this. You see that? That way when I fold it over, it's not hanging off the edge. So I'm gonna run through and pinch all my corners in. Now I'm gonna lay glue down on this flap. And we'll glue our short flaps down. I'm use my bone folder and make good contact to the edge of the chipboard. And then just roll that paper over. And just kind of burnish it until it grabs and that way we get perfect corners see that okay okay let's do the other side put our glue down Make sure we're getting our glue everywhere, even on that little part that we pinched in in the corner. Lay that down. And if you do your corners that way, I promise you, you will get perfect corners every time. Okay? See how that looks on the outside? There's nothing hanging over. Got perfect corners. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna kind of press into my creases here, my spaces. I'm gonna run my bone folder along the edge that I can get to. Because we don't want our paper to buckle when we go to close the book. So I'm gonna do this now because we're gonna lay down our hinge system and I wanna have this already done underneath here before we add more paper to the top of it. Okay, so I've used my bone folder. So now I'm gonna gently train my paper. Okay. And as you can see, none of it's breaking, splitting, or anything like that. And now, like I said, this is bowed a little, but it's gonna, it'll lay flat as it dries. So now I'm gonna, now that I've kind of trained the paper a little bit, I'm gonna set this off to the side. Let's work on our hinge system. Put the cap on my glue for now. Okay. So what we're gonna need for our hinge system is another piece of paper. We're gonna need our paper cutter. Now the size of our pages are gonna be five and a half, okay? So I want to cut my paper for my hinges at five and a quarter. and we're gonna do by 11. Okay, save this, because we will use those. And now what we're gonna need is our scoreboard. Okay, if you don't have a scoreboard, your ruler and your bone folder will work too. Okay, let me get my notes here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna score, our hinges are going to be made up, our hinges are gonna be half an inch, okay? So our gaps are gonna be a quarter of an inch, okay? So, and then I want some space to the side here 
about two and a quarter inches because this is where my first hinge will start because we want to have some overlay that goes over here to kind of stabilize us. Okay, so I'm gonna start my scoring at two and a quarter. And then I'm gonna go two and three quarters. And then three and one quarter. So just to explain to you, I've got a half inch here and a half inch here. When I fold that, that's gonna make my hinge. Okay, now I want my quarter inch gap. So I'm gonna go three and a half. Ah, get that in there. I'm gonna go, <laughs> it's not working for me. So I've got three and a quarter, three and a half. Now I'm gonna do my next hinge and we're gonna have six pages. So we're gonna go four, four and a half, that's our next hinge. So now we need a quarter inch space. So I'm gonna go four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, that's our next hinge. Now we need our next quarter inch space, which is at six. Then we're gonna go six and a half and seven then we're gonna go seven and a quarter because that's our next space. Seven and three quarters, eight and a quarter. Now we need our next quarter inch space. So we're gonna go eight and a half. And then we're gonna go nine and nine and a half. That's our six pages. Okay, and then we have a little space on this end, okay? Let's see if you can see this. Okay, you can see all my score marks there. Okay, let me set this aside. And now let's fold. Okay, so typically how I fo start to fold mine is I fold in the middle of my two half inch spaces. Okay, and I get those burnish down and then these will then fold up and then I'll grab my other half inch score line so essentially that's what we're building that's what our two half inch score lines fold up like that and then the quarter inches are our gaps in between so then I'd start with the next half inch two half inches and then this will fold down like this on the gap okay so now you see we had now I can show you, we've got two half inch hinges with a quarter inch space in between, okay? So I'm just gonna keep folding until I get all of my hinges pointed up. So I've got one, two, three. Now I'm gonna go to my next one, fold in the middle, and then just kind of go back and forth on that quarter inch score line. Burnish it on both sides. So we've got four now, four. Go to our next one. And just kind of flatten it down onto the table here. And here's the last one. Okay, so we have our six hinges with a quarter inch space in between each one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through with my glue 
Actually, I think I'll use the last of my art glitter glue for this part because it dries super quick. In, I'm turning it over and I'm going to glue the two half inch pieces to themselves so that my hinges are shut together like this. I love that art glitter glue. It grabs so fast. Okay, so now my hinge is glued together. Okay, and run and do the next one here. And these hinges are what our pages are going to sit on. Okay. And the next one. Putting glue on just one side of one of those half inch pieces and gluing it to the other half inch piece. Leaving those quarter inch gaps alone. We don't want to mess with those. grab yet. And I'm going to turn it around and do the last two from the other side. It'll be a little bit easier. Okay. I know I ran through that fairly quickly. But if you'll just follow the scoring measurements that I gave you, it'll all come together. Okay, and here's our last one. Glue that down. Okay, now there's our hinge system. So we've got six hinges for six pages. Now what I'm going to do is just lay this in front of me and I'm going to bend them all in the same direction and I'm going to burnish them down really well. Okay. Now I'm going to bend them in the other direction and do the same thing. Just burnish them down really well. We want them to bend nicely. Okay. Now we're going to bring our cover back in. And our hinge system is going to sit right here centered on the spine. Okay. I'm going to get them standing up straight here. So what I'm looking for is I'm going to center this top to bottom. I'm going to center it top to bottom. And then what I'm looking for is that there's equal space and the way I've measured it should be quarter of an inch. There's equal space on the edge of this hinge to the spine, edge of the spine and this hinge to the head of, edge of the spine. It doesn't matter that this side's shorter than this side for these extra paper because it's going to get covered. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the back entirely with glue. And I want to use my brush because I want to make sure that I get glue everywhere. So as best as I can and as not sloppy as possible, <laughs> especially in these hinge grooves where our hinges are, I want to make sure that I have contact with the glue everywhere. Sorry about that. I know I'm out of screen. I dropped it. Okay, make 
sure and get good glue coverage. All right. Now I'm going to center it top to bottom and edge to edge over my spine, making sure that I've got about the same amount of space on each side. Okay, I've got glue everywhere, but that's okay. That's all going to be covered. And now I want to burnish. I'm going to go into each hinge into my quarter inch space here and really press down with my bone folder so that I've got good contact in between my hinges. We don't want those lifting or anything like that. Burnish this down really good. Put these hinges the other way. Making sure that I've got good contact. That looks good. Now what we need to do is we need to score in our little gussets here so that we can close our book. So gently I'm going to press with the edge of my bone folder into that gap, find it, and then gently press. It's got glue on it, so the paper's nice and soft. And now I'm just going to gently close slowly. I don't want my paper to break or tear. There we go. So this is the base of our book. Doesn't look too pretty right now, but it will. Okay, and I see that my hinge is kind of popping up right here. So keep an eye out for that. So I'm just gonna press that down. Now I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna leave it to dry a little bit. I don't wanna mess with this anymore and let's work on our pages. Okay. So our pages are gonna be five and a half by 11 and we need six of them so we need six pieces of paper two three four five six okay and we're going to cut these vertically at five and a half so cut all six of them at five and a 